Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a spectacular day. And today I wanted to continue along the free energy uh, kind of theme. And I found a guy by the name of John Worrell Keeley. And uh, the story says that he actually invented a free energy train back in the 1800s so I thought we'd have a bit of a look-see all right so this is John Worrell Keeley man with the beard here Free energy and sympathetic vibratory physics. And it says he lived from 1827 to 1898 and discovered and developed the science of sympathetic vibratory physics. Keeley developed the famous Keeley motor from the 1860s into the 1880s when he shifted research from it to the musical dinosphere and other etheric based projects. During his early career, Mr. Keeley was engaged in various pursuits. He was employed by, uh, from time to time as a physician, a pharmacist, and in other occupations. But since he was 10 years of age, he had been interested in the study of tones and resonance of those rapid and incessant vibrations which underlie all we see in the world around us and to which all the energies of the acting universe are primarily due. It is this study which he still continues and the power which he has developed is claimed to come from a control of these vibrations. Okay guys, so he's talking about turning these vibrations into energy and using it as a power source. Uh, then it says, one of the editors of the Times in London in January 1891 wrote out this question to Mr. Keeley. What impulse led you primarily into the research of acoustic physics? Keeley replied, an impulse associated with, with sympathetically with my mental organism from birth, seemingly as I was acutely sensible of it in my childhood. Before I had, I had reached my 10th year researching in the realm of acoustic physics, I had a perfect fascination for it. So he was just fascinated with uh, sounds and vibrations. Okay, so this is Infogalactic. John Ernst Worrell Keeley uh, was a US inventor from Philadelphia who claimed to have discovered a new motive power which was originally described as vaporic or etheric force and later used as an unarmed force based on vibratory sympathy by which he produced the interatomic ether from water and air. Despite numerous requests from the stockholders of the Keeley Motor Company, which had been established to produce a practical motor based on his work, he consistently refused to reveal to them the principles on which his motor operated and also repeatedly refused demands to produce a marketable product by claiming that he needed uh, to perform more experiments. So this thing looks like it never really hit. So it's, again, it's this kind of story. It, it, you know, it just seems like they've like they found this stuff and they're trying to work out how it works. You know, they know they've got this tech and they've seen it work, but they they don't really have a working understanding of how to use it. And I think this is what, what was going on. It says public interest was aroused. And within a few months, the Keeley Motor Company was formed in New York with a capital of $5 million. So a lot of people had, you know, a lot of faith in this. Keeley developed... Uh, Keeley delivered descriptions of the supposed principles of this process of various occasions in 1884 following the demonstration of his vaporic gun. Stripping the process of all technical terms it is simply this. I take water and air, two mediums of different specific gravity and produce, and produce from them by generation and effect under vibrations that liberates from the air and water the interatomic ether. The energy of this ether is boundless and can hardly be comprehended. The specific gravity of this ether is about four times 
lighter than the hydrogen gas, the lightest gas so far discovered. Okay, so he's saying that he's using water and <laughs> sorry, water and air, and he's running through a certain frequency of vibration, and it is splitting them and releasing ether, what uh, ether source energy, and he's been able to tap into it. Wow, free energy, guys! That is free energy. On November 10th, 1874, Keeley gave a demonstration of an etheric generator to a small group of people in Philadelphia. Keeley blew into a nozzle for about half a minute, then poured five gallons of tap water into the same nozzle. After some adjustments of, of pressure, a pressure gauge indicated that of 10,000 psi, which Keeley said was evidence that the water had been disintegrated and a mysterious vapour had been liberated from the generator, capable of powering machinery. In subsequent demonstrations, he kept changing the terminology he used to vibratory generator, to the hydro-pneumatic pulsating vacuum engine, to the quadruple negative harmonics. It was later reported that the witnesses of the demonstrations were so impressed that they formed a stock company, purchased patent rights, for the six New England states and paid $50,000 cash for their shares in the invention. So there you go, he obviously had something. He's like blowing and putting air into a container, putting it under pressure and saying, and these people, he's demonstrated to the capacity that these people throw $50,000 at him in 1874. That's millions of dollars. So uh, I'm not going to read through all of this, but there's a lot of stuff here. We've got. Um, I don't know what the stockholders are. Oh, stockholder sued. He obviously got sued. Vaporic guns. Demonstration in 1885. What he called an exhibition of his motor at his workshop in North 20th Street, Philadelphia. Around 20 witnesses attending, including newspaper reporters, a mechanical engineer, and officers and stockholders of the Keeley Motor Company. A reporter noticed a large iron globular object, which he was told was a new engine which Keeley was in. Engaged in building. Uh, Keeley assembled an apparatus on top of which he uh, of which was screwed a globe with several apertures to which tubes were fixed leading to cylinders. A reporter asked if he could see the globe's contents but Keeley declined saying that it would not take too long and that he wished to show results rather than the mechanism. Keely then proceeded by taking a violin bow and rubbing it across one of the two large tuning forks, which formed part of his apparatus. After making a minor adjustment to the device, he opened a uh, stopcock leading into the leading into one of the cylinders, and the witness heard a hiss of escaping air. Keely told them that it was in fact etheric vapor, adding, "It ain't compressed air or any." vapor having substance the force was then used to lift some weights and Keely claimed that he had almost 22,000 psi of pressure at his disposal so there we go a bit down there a bit more uh, so you can read up on John Ernest Keely now uh, let's have a look at what he was doing and this is John Ernest Keely and as we can see in the background here we have some tech now what does this look like this wheel here so this is ed lead scallon's flywheel from coral castle uh, where he was apparently using anti-grav to move huge blocks around and this is the wheel that Mr. Keeley has. Do you think that there's something in common with those, maybe? Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is all these globes. Okay, this is Keeley with his musical diasphere. But if you look at all this equipment, like look at this, this is not a good picture. What's this? 
Now this is obviously a metal ball. We see these these balls everywhere, the mercury balls, and and we also have globes everywhere, don't we? And UAP did a video, and he was looking at globes uh, at, at Christie's up for auction, and he was questioning because you look at these globes, and the con there's no actually there's no countries on them, right? Or the countries that are on them aren't the countries are, that we see today on the globe. So are these things even globes? Are they representing the Earth, or have these? Uh, is that just a convenient way to conceal? A lot of ancient tech because look at this and of course we have all these globes on these stands going right back into antiquity always the same they've always got this uh, like equatorial sort of uh, ring that goes around them and then they've got the other one that goes uh, from the pole to pole as we're told and the whole thing spins inside that. It's always the same design where they hold these. Um, yeah, so these, and, and even down to these kind of things, what's this, some kind of a lamp with a globe in it? You know, all these globe bits, what are they? Look at this. And if we look through some of Mr. Keeley's photos here, you know, you see lots of them. Here's this globe again. Uh, this is, what's this? Dale Palm Biography, look at this. Big metal ball. And they, so these, these what they were, what he, what I can work out is that he was saying is this is a pressurized system. So he's using these to pressurize water and air inside and from that he's getting ether coming out of it. Uh, so not the gravity balls, uh, sorry, the mercury balls, but he's also, it says, and I'm, I'm finding hard to, fi to find info on it, but there's information that says he made a train that ran uh, on free energy but that and it was something to do with anti-grab and here we go here's this this same shape again see this kind of globe looking thing but this is tech this is tech and we have so what he was, you know, he was obviously a smart guy because he's got all these plans and he, he actually did make a motor. He actually did get investors and he got a company up and going. But uh, it's just kind of been uh, swept under the rug. This is it's saying that this is the Keeley motor. And isn't that interesting? We've got a big flywheel here. And we have these. These balls or balloons filled with something pressure balls i don't know and just look how this motor is constructed i mean look even even their feet have got scrolly bits it was just a different world wasn't it you know, they, they cared about quality um, these with all these pressurized tubes everywhere creating the fuel and and people are still working on this kind of stuff and again we get this flywheel Is that part of what we're missing? Is this flywheel thing? Ah. So I don't know. So I've just found this guy. So I just wanted to sort of show you. I'm going to have to have a bit more of a look into this, I think. Because it definitely uh, is looking similar to the, you know, the, the uh, apparatus machinery that Ed Leeds Scallon had. And definitely lots of diagrams, working motors, a um, few banksters and rubber barrows poking their heads in here. Uh, John Hutchinson is selling anti-gravity lab. Really? And this is actually John Hutchinson here. And I did look into his work a few years ago and he is... Uh, yeah, he, he's got the tech for anti-grav. Uh, pretty sure he's got free energy. Of course, he's completely suppressed. Ended up having to turn his apartment into a lab, into his own lab, because he couldn't get funding or anything. And he's one of these uh, amazingly awesome geniuses who has the secrets, but is not allowed to share them. And there is a thing called the Hutchinson Effect, uh, which is named after him. And so I'll, I'll have a look into uh, 
So I do want to have a bit more of a digger deep into John and his work because, uh, like I said, he's one of these guys. He knows what's going on. He's tied up. We've got a few few of them. Uh, Eric Dollard is another one. Um, we've had a few in the past. So, yeah, I will be going down this road. This is just a very, very big rabbit hole, but I will get there. And there are people still working on this kind of stuff um, around today. So I'll, I'll, I'll find some of those. I can't recall the name. Uh, there's a, a mad scientist type guy, one of those geniuses. I think he's in Canada and he plays a lot with magnets and magnetic forces and levitation and he has things running around on his floor and it's all pretty cool. Uh, here's an interesting pick. Okay, we've got the hand, we've got the glory of God, we've got the eye, all seeing eye. And up the top we have all these shapes. And of course, geometry, it's, it's all these cymatics that are always in circles, aren't they? So is that something else? Is that another clue? Is this some kind of representation of a cymatic? I don't know. And I got these shots sent to uh, sent through to me by Bastion. And this is, of course, you know, the holy hand grenade that we see everywhere. And again, it's a ball. What is going on with these these spheres, these balls? Uh, of course, we've got the little antenna on top and here as well, and the scepter. So is this all antiquitechiness? This is an interesting pick because just look where these spires land. This one goes right up the middle, and then these they hit on the at the exact same points, just at parts on the on this uh, shape. So what's that? Is that some kind of tuning fork? Maybe? Again, this is one of those egg things, and this one, it's, it's opened. And as you can see, there's, it looks like, uh, I think this one is Mithra. Oh, yeah, so this is a ball. So is there something uh, inside of those balls as well? This is the thing. It looks like some are full with mercury, um, some are anti-grab, and some are obviously ornamental. But we get this a lot when we have uh, tech that's found. People know it's important, but they can't work it, can't get it going. So they turn it into ornamental things. Oh, and here's the X-Radium cooking. This is uh, Martin actually showed this on his uh, latest vlog as well and people were cooking with radium and now we're told that radium will kill you I'm not sure what that says but so there you go they were using radium for cooking back then and you know I haven't heard of any mass uh, you know dying out of people with radioactivity poisoning from radium never heard that one but they're obviously selling it and using it so as always it's all lies guys and this is called uh, the Barnum and Bailey Two Hemispheres Bandwagon from 1903. It's not the best photo, but you can see how ornate this thing is. Like I said, it's not the best photo, but you can kind of see what's going on there. We've got this huge metal ball here. It looks like we've got lions around it. Uh, just, I mean, the finishes and facades on these cars is ridiculous just completely covered and just a few picks to finish off and this is just part one I'm obviously going to have to do a bit more digging on this subject because uh, I need another rabbit hole to go down um, but yeah check this ball out and look at the standard sitting in there's another little ball down here now obviously there's little tubes so this looks like some kind of a vacuum container uh, that looks like a globe right This uh, is left to right the compound disintegrator, which is our flywheel, the vibratory globe. It's even called a globe. And a resonator combined. And then we have medium for testing vibration under different orders of evolution. Again, kind of looking like the flywheel a bit there, isn't it? Ah, that's of course our globe and this is see the if you look at these that this is not the earth this these are not the land masses that we have on the earth if you look at look at these globes so what are they they're not representing 
you know, the Earth or you know globe, whatever Earth. They just they don't represent that. the The land masses just aren't there. Uh, this one, obviously, big big ball here, and this says globe again, globe motor and provisional engine. So they call it. I mean, obviously, it's a globe. You know, it's a ball. It's a sphere. But globe is really only used uh, in reference to the Earth and to lights, light globes. We don't really use globe that that often. It's more sphere that we use. But so that's a globe. And uh, yeah, free energy, anti grav tech. So is this how they've hidden? You know, is this all tech, all these stuff that we see? And we see these pictures all through the books from the 1400s, 1500s. They've all got those globes all the way through them. So are they are they telling us porky pies? I found this interesting. Uh, it's, it's not the best picture. It's a bit hard to read. But just see how it's got the musical notes. So it's all about resonance and how, they, how it interacts with each other. And in here we have 333, three, three, of course. You know, we've got... Uh, the Trinity, you know, the three, the six, the nine. It's, and there's, I mean, uh, I was actually doing a little bit of research for another uh, video, video series I'm doing, and I found John Keely. So um, I do have stuff coming up on Marco Roden as well and his uh, Roden coil. Here is another picture of one of his motors. This is the hydro vacuum motor. And you can see, so these, we saw these before, these balloon type things. These are obviously vacuum containers, vacuum chambers. And the flywheel, this is called the compound disintegrator. Uh, so this has obviously got to do with vibration and resonance of some kind. It spins, we've got this stuff in the middle. You know, one, two, three, one, two, three, six. And then there's, I don't know, is there nine in there? Who knows, I do have some more information on the 3, 6 and 9 as well, uh, which is coming up. This is, oops, Keely with his musical diasphere. And again, it's a globe. Uh, he's even got a little miniature globe down here. It looks like he's sharpening his pencil or something. Uh, and up here we have, it looks like th that flywheel thing. So what is all this old tech? And I mean, how, how was he manufacturing this? as well you know back in the 1800s who what what you know what foundries and factories were building this equipment for him uh, this is showing that yeah his motors that run off or that capture etheric energy can actually be turned into mechanical energy and run machines uh, again this is one of his devices and this is obviously, you know, some kind of vacuum chamber. Got the sphere up here. And it says the generator was used to generate etheric vapor from pulsating pressure and vacuum working on water and air. Pretty interesting stuff. And of course, we don't get taught this at school, do we? We don't get taught this as part of science or history. The reason is they don't want us to know. Uh, the vib vibratory planetary globe, or what the? Vibratory planetary globe with wave plate, fork, and spirophone. So I'm guessing this is the spirophone. Uh, the fork. Uh, the wave plate is probably underneath here. I'm not sure what the fork is. Where the fork is the fork? Uh, but, but I mean, look, look, this is, you know, there's no circuitry here. This is basically a, a, a mechanical and I guess what chemical machine because they're getting, he's saying he's using water and air to get ether. And, but again, it's a globe. It's in one of these exact same, you know, sort of cribs that we see all the globes in. And there's globes everywhere around it. Little balls, little globes. So were these globes actually tech? Is this a cover-up? Because look at that. You know, is this what the deal was? And now, and then they decided they better make some 
ones with wooden stands just to say, oh, no, no, it's just it's a globe, but it's a globe of, um, 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 oh, oh, the Earth, the globe, that's what it is. Because, I mean, seriously, look at that. It's just, come on. Something else is going on here. Here is, again, a picture of his machine. You can see globe here, vacuum cylinders, flywheel. Again, we've seen this one with the vacuum chambers and the flywheel. Looking a bit like a sewing machine as well, isn't it? You know, sewing machines have been around for a long time. They have flywheels. And just look at the precision, how well this is all made. All brass. Just good stuff. This is uh, Keely and his mates. I uh, can't read that, but basically this is the company. Oh, is that J.P. Morgan? It looks a bit like him. Don't know, but uh, I found this interesting just because, yeah, globe, globe, flywheel, flywheel, and just these dudes standing around in suits. And, you know, this doesn't look like a lot, does it? It doesn't look like you can get free energy out of this stuff. And I think that's the thing. We're, we're looking for these intricate sort of machines but i don't think they were i think they were just fairly simple i think it's all it's all simple the truth is simple and we've just been told to think it's hard this is actually not john keely this is someone else um someone else's invention but running off the same kind of stuff we've got you know the vacuum chamber down here and up here the vacuum chambers cogs and this was a motor uh, sheets steel. I don't know. Someone stole it uh, again. So yeah, just a globe. Oops. Uh, uh, this one found interesting. This is one of the components of his machines, and of course, it's just a sphere, it's a globe, the globe on top, antenna thing going through it. And this, I mean, do we see these on tops? You know, if this was upright. You know, and this is one of these balls on the tops of buildings. And we even have like an antenna going through it. What do you think? And then this must be the fork they were talking about before, like the tuning fork thing, I would think. So this is all got to do with resonance and vibration and ether. And also uh, water and air. Uh, the holy hand grenade. See these everywhere, again, all through the old books. And who has them? You know, the, the Jesuits. The musical diasphere. Again, it's just what's going on here. Another little globe down there. And globes on the wall. But nothing to do with maps or geography. This is all tech. You can see this wire coming off. And just again, look at the cradle it's in. You know, we just see those cradles everywhere on globes. And this again, this is tech, this is a machine. This just looks like these old world, uh, you know, like radios and things we used to get. But quite clearly, look at the tech on top of it. So did they used to all just run off free energy and the top got ripped off them? This is the negative attractor and indicator. And again, here's this tuning fork thing at the bottom. Looks like it's a vacuum device. We've got little chambers here, and he's somehow drawing out ether energy. Again, the globe. Vibratory planetary globe. Why is it called a planetary globe? This is his pneumatic gun. Ha <laughs> ha, pneumatic gun? Really? Look much like a cannon to anyone? What do you think? What are cannons, right? Little ball on the end? What is going on? I mean, obviously, it's becoming very clear that what we're presented with as Certain forms of technology are technology, but they're not the technology they're telling us they are. 
they've changed the function of them and telling us something completely different. This is just an interesting diagram. Uh, molecular, molecular showing subdivision of matter. And of course we have, you know, the threes in there. The trinity. And of course we see this, uh, the trinity, you know, the three-leaf clover on all the cathedrals. Uh, this is again someone else's machine. This is not Keeley's vacuum seal, but this is showing that you can turn it in there. They're sucking it out and turning it into mechanical energy. So these were running actual machines. Or they, I'd, I'd say they were back in the day. This looks a lot like uh, Ed Lee Scallon again. Used for testing the sympathetic force of vitalized discs. Ed, Ed Lee Scallon's setup looked a lot like this. He had weights and things hanging off it. And then I found this picture. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure what it is, but... Now again, the flywheel. What's going on? Uh, another one, the transmitter. And again, we've got a globe here. That one again. And that's the wagon we saw before. I mean, this thing, just like, it's actually a circus wagon. But a uh, bit Phoenician, look at that. Like, seriously, where did this come from? Who made this? This is, and we've got a globe on top, which, you can look at the land masses on it. That's not the Earth. That's not the globe that, you know, they try and tell us is the Earth. Got the lions, lions of Judah people in their hat, but where did this come from? Because if this is a circus card, who built it? Who paid for it? You can't tell me the trapeze artists are out there carving this stuff. That's just ridiculous. Look at the front of it. And then of course in the background, Tartarian buildings. There it is again, that's not the best picture. Oh, someone's dad's in there. And this, this is a different uh, different cart. This is, again, the globe. This is half the globe. That's why they were called, like, the double globe. Early century, running around trying to tell everyone, no, 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 it's a globe. It's, it's not Antiquitec. It's a globe. Please believe us. So there you go, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Just a bit of a quick look at some Antiquitec. But, yeah, mainly is what I wanted to show you is this kind of stuff. John Keeley and all these uh, free energy, anti-grav, planetary globe things. You know, what is, is, is this part of the deal? Have they changed all this tech and told us that they're globes uh, for navigation when they're actually free energy and anti-grav devices? That is the question. So, yeah, like I said... There's a lot on this subject and um, a lot starting to tie in together. So, uh, yeah, we'll make this part one of a bit of a mini series, I think. So I shall be back. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for spending some time with me. Have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.